I bought six of the most popular bike chain cleaning tools under $40 because I wanted to compare them to see if I could decide which one I think is best. Now in this video, I'm gonna grade each of these tools in five categories. Ease of use, effectiveness, brusher and wiper quality, tidiness, and durability. Let's jump in. We're gonna be evaluating the White Lightning bike chain cleaning tool, the Bike Hands YC791. I think this is sold under a couple other brands as well. Finish Lines Pro Chain Cleaner, Park Tools Cyclone CM5.3, Pedro's Chain Pig 2, Muck Off X3. The first thing we're gonna look at is how easily these open and close and attach the chain. The White Lightning has a rolling snap top to open and the top lifts straight off. It uses a cage design to go over the rear derailleur. The bike hand has a rolling snap top to open and the top lifts straight off as well. It has a removable handle that slides into place. You can do this uh, with the unit open or closed. The finish line has a rolling snap top and the top lifts straight off. Also has a removable handle slides into place. Again, you can do this when it is open or closed. The Park Tools has two stainless steel clips, one on either end, and then the top lifts straight off. It has a removable handle that slides into place. This can be done while it's open or closed. The Park Tools handle can be mounted to either side so that the tool can be reversed. The Pedro's Chain Pig has a quick release and the top is hinged. It also comes completely off if you pop it straight out. It has a rear swiveling hook that will hook up and over a jockey wheel on the rear derailleur. The Muck Off X3 has a rolling snap top. The top is not hinged. You have to slide it out. It has a removable handle. The top does have to be removed in order to install the handle. All right, let's take a look at how these install. First, we have the white lightning. Pull the cage back, pop the roller top off. Ooh, that's tight. Quite an angle on the chain there. Put it up over the back of the cage. Now that looks like it's gonna interfere with the chain, but okay. Adding fluid to this unit, there is no way to add fluid without opening the unit. Let's then test fit the bike hand unit. Pop off the top and pop that back on. You can add fluid to this unit here with this built-in funnel and that looks pretty convenient. We're gonna test fit the finish line unit. Pop off the rolling top. It's quite an angle on the chain there. Again, I'm gonna have to work with that as I push this down. Uh, it's tight. You can see the chain enters at an angle and exits at an angle. Go ahead and try to hold it in place with the handle here and... Boy, that doesn't move very well. You really gotta muscle this thing to hold it straight. I know I've got quite a bit of tension on my chain. I suppose if you wanted to add fluid here, you could but I don't see a readily accessible spot to put fluid in this without having the unit open. That's not a great fit. All right, we're gonna test fit the Park Tools unit. Pop off the two clips and place that down. Put the clips back on, hold the handle and cycle the chain. This case also has a built-in funnel where you could add fluid quite easily. We're gonna go ahead and test fit the chain pig. Take off the top, rear hook over the rear jockey wheel, snap the tube back together, and cycle. Uh, you can add fluid to this through the built-in funnel. It looks like it would be pretty easy to access. We're gonna test fit the muck off unit. Slide it out, fit that onto the chain, slide it back on, and clip. Now to add fluid to this unit, there's actually a small hole here at the top. It uh, looks like you would have to use the fitting that came with this and fill up this reservoir. The difference between Muckoff and the other units is that there is a reservoir that holds the solvent at the top until you push down this button and release it onto the chain. Now the intention of the design appears to be to prevent dirty solvent from recycling back up onto the chain. Most of the manufacturers recommend doing 30 revolutions of the chain through the tool, taking it off, wiping the chain down, and then repeating again. Now I'm curious to know how much grime each chain cleaner can take off given a controlled number of revolutions. For this test, I've decided to pack seven chain links to the brim with Lucas Red and Sticky Grease. We'll then pass those seven chain links through each chain cleaning tool three times to see how much of the material the chain cleaning tool was able to remove. We'll start the chain in the same location for each test. I'll make sure to use the same number of narrow and wide chain links 
And I will also make sure to clean the front chain ring, rear cassette, and jockey wheels thoroughly between each test. And for all these tests, I'll be using the same biodegradable degreaser. Now I should say before I get started, I recognize that this test is not perfect. Nobody's chain should be this gummed up with grease when you're getting ready to use a chain cleaning tool. But what I'm really interested in seeing is how efficient and effective each chain cleaning tool is at removing some of this material. And we should get a pretty good idea of that when we inspect the results. One. Two. Three. Let's take a look at the results. The white lightning removed the majority of the grease. It scored an A on this test. The bike hand unit removed very little of the grease. It scored a C. The finish line removed the majority of the grease. It scored an A. Park tool removed a moderate amount of the grease. It scored a B. Pedro's also removed a moderate amount of the grease. It scored a B. Muckoff removed a moderate amount of the grease. It scored a B. All right, I'm gonna do a quick color key on shades of red, and though it's a little difficult to see, you can get a general idea of what the results look like side by side. In order to get an idea of the quality of the brushes and wipers in each of these chain cleaning tools, I'm gonna take them through five full cleaning cycles, about 300 revolutions. Then I'll pop out the brushes and wipers, we'll take a look and see how they held up. We'll take a look at the brush and wiper design as I run each of the tests, and then we'll inspect the results. The White Lightning has three roller brushes, the pins for the roller brushes are plastic, and the White Lightning does not have a wiper. The bristles are a little chewed up on these outside rollers. Uh, it looks like I may have lost a couple, but the middle roller looks okay. The bike hand unit has four roller brushes, one large and three small. The pins are made of stainless steel, and it does have a foam wiper. Uh, the brushes all look like they are intact. The sponge is a little torn up here on the edges. Surprisingly, these pins, which I thought were stainless steel, are showing signs of rusting on the ends. And this is after they've sat overnight. I also noticed that on the case here, there's some spider web cracks uh, right where the top brushes mount. The finish line unit has three roller brushes. The pins are plastic. It also has a two-stage wiper system, which is made of plastic. And the unit has a magnet at the bottom to pull any metal particulate down and away from the chain. The bristles on this first roller brush are pretty chewed up. These other two look like they held up okay. The wipers are in pretty good shape and no noticeable damage to the case itself. The Park Tools unit has three roller brushes. The pins are plastic. It also has a foam wiper and a magnet at the bottom of the unit to pull any metal particulate down away from the chain. The bristles held up fairly well. It looks like we had a few that came out. They're still stuck here in the brushes. The wiper sponge also seems to have held up well. No rips or tears in that. No obvious damage to the case. The Pedro's unit has three roller brushes. There are no pins. It's just a fixed plastic nub at the end of the brush. And it does have a foam wiper. The brushes themselves uh, don't look like they sustained much damage at all over five cleaning cycles. Uh, they actually look pretty close to being new. The wiper sponge is uh, still intact. No tears or damage to that, just a little bit dirty. And the chain pig case itself has no visible damage. The muck off unit has one roller brush. This is disassembled. The pin is plastic. It has a two stage wiper system. Both are plastic as well as a top wiper. The bristles on this middle brush appear to be pretty chewed up all the way around. Uh, the outside edge has a little bit of damage to it as well. The wipers look okay. No real damage there. This case was left to dry overnight and I've got rust already on three of the four screws for the top of the assembly. 
I'm also noticing that a crack has formed down the edge of the case after running it through five cleaning cycles. For those of you who live in an apartment or may not have easy access to an outdoor area to do bike maintenance, I put together a little test to see how tidy each one of these is when you put it through its operation. I wanna see how much solvent splatters out of each one of these cases. And so for this test, I bought some blue litmus paper which I'm gonna place under the mounting location for each one of the chain cleaning tools. This should give a visual indicator of any degreaser that might be splattering out during use. I'm then gonna perform 30 revolutions through each chain cleaning tool, approximately one revolution per second, and then we'll inspect the results. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pedro's definitely the cleanest, uh, followed by surprisingly bike hand, uh, and then it's a toss up between park tools and finish line, and then last place is gonna be white lightning and muck off. In order to do a very basic test on case durability, I'm gonna do a three foot drop test on each of these cleaning tools. Here's the white lightning, case is 2.16 millimeters thick, weighs in at 4.1 ounces, and three foot drop test. No visible damage to the white lightning case, no cracks or breaks. Here's the bike hand unit, case is 2.4 millimeters thick, weighs in at 9.8 ounces. Three foot drop test. No visible cracks or breaks on the outside of the case. We did have a little bit of spider cracking around these roller wheels, uh, which appears to have gotten worse, and we now have a spider crack between both roller wheels here where the, the top and the bottom of the case meet. Here's the finish line unit is 2.52 millimeters thick and weighs in at eight ounces. And three foot drop test. For the finish line case, there is no visible damage. Here's the park tool unit. Case is 2.14 millimeters thick, weighs in at 8.9 ounces, three foot drop test. All right, handle busted off, bottom magnet popped off. However, this looks like it will pop right back in. You can see there we have cracks at the base. This is a Pedro's Chain Pig 2, 2.74 millimeters thick, weighs in at 6.6 .6 ounces, three foot drop test. Okay, we did shatter something on the bottom of the unit. You can see these cracks here at the fluid reservoir location. There's a crack here at the top of the case. There's a spider crack on the inside of the quick release mount. We also lost one of our hooks that goes up and over the back of the case. Okay, we have the Muckoff X3 unit. The case is 2.38 millimeters thick, weighs in at 6.7 ounces, three foot drop test. It appears that the only new damage is here in the back corner of the case where we lost a chunk of the bottom half. And of course we already had a crack along the edge of the front of the case where it appears perhaps the chain caught and caused some flex in the case itself. Okay, let's do a quick run through on the pricing and overall results for each one of these cleaning tools. The White Lightning unit retails for $14.99 and I'm not clear on the warranty. The Bike Hand unit retails for $24.99 with a one year warranty. The Finish Line Pro Chain Cleaner retails for $24.99 and I'm not clear on the warranty. The Park Tool CM 5.3 Cyclone retails for $26.95 with a one year warranty. The Pedro's Chain Pig 2 retails for $31.99 with a lifetime warranty. The Muckoff X3 retails for $34.99, and I'm not clear on the warranty. All right, and here's the overall results. Despite suffering some cracks and breaks in the three foot drop test, the two tools that perform the best across all the other categories are the Pedro's Chain Pig 2 and the Park Tool Cyclone. These will be the tools that I keep in my shop. I hope you can get out and enjoy the trails. We'll see you next time. bought seven chain cleaning tools, but this one was so frustrating and cheaply made, I decided not even to mess with it. Ah, dumb.